further back than that, though, I think. It'd be great if it was in tune. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. What's wrong with that guitar? Uh, it's Fender, it's not a Japanese copy. If it's a Japanese <laughs> copy, it'd be in tune. <laughs> What we're trying to do is raise as much money as we can to send as much food and as many drugs that we don't absorb as we can to um, the affected areas of Africa, whether it's Ethiopia or Sudan, it doesn't matter, um, within the shortest space of time possible. And to do that, the most effective way for all of us to do it is to contribute whatever talents we have it's easy enough to stick your hand in your pocket and give whatever. It's, you have to give something of yourself when you use your talents, I suppose, without sounding pompous, I hope. And um, that's what we want to do, and that's how we intend to do it. How we decided we'd do it is, um, obviously, like everybody else, I was uh, distressed and appalled by that BBC report from Ethiopia. In particular, I think there's one image which is as lasting an image of our generation as that child in Vietnam with the napalm on his back running away. And that was um, that 23-year-old nurse alone in some desert in northern Ethiopia who had to pick from a field of 10,000 starving Africans, 300 who would survive. And I don't think any human should have to undergo that sort of thing. And then the 300 who were picked were taken behind a waist-high wall where they were given cans of liquid butter oil to eat because that's all there was and the ones who had been chosen turned their backs on the remaining 9,700 who looked over the wall knowing that they'd been condemned to death and holding up their babies hoping that they might at least be chosen and that image um, on that wall uh, destroyed me and um, so the next day aside from sending off my bit of money I was speaking to Paul up at the tube and um, I said, uh, I think I'll try and get some people to do a single. And I knew Midge was on there and I said, put me on to him. Paula was screaming at me from the, uh, from the makeup room to come and talk to Bob on the phone. And uh, I thought it was something to do with the fact that he didn't have his house keys or whatever. And, uh, and he, he came across this idea about doing a single. I thought it was a great idea. Um, and we just followed it up. And a couple of days later, I called Bob up and said, well, you know, I've had a thought about it, and you know, what do you think we should actually do about it? And then he got back to me and said, what do you want to do about it? So I said, well, we should get a song together. And I rang up Sting then and Simon Le Bon, both of whom I know quite well, and again, immediately committed themselves to the point of like saying, what do you want to do, where and when? And uh, Simon cancelling out things on Duran Duran's behalf so we could get back in time. So then Midge and I worked on the song. I had um, sort of the first half and he sent down a tape of this tune which became the second half and we married it together up here with the middle eight part and it seemed to work quite well. And then I rang all the other people and regardless of their politics, and obviously a lot of the bands disagree politically, I think in every case we rang, I think there's two people who didn't get back to me out of practically the entire, I think, British pop industry. And they said, yes, we'll do it. And I think, well, I mean, the extremes are going to is chartering planes to make sure that they're back on Sunday morning in time for the 10.30 start and stuff like that. So it is um, gratifying. You know, I don't want to get all maudlin, but it is. It was a nice thing to work on and it was very gratifying that they do it. The main thing was to get as much money as we could out of what we produced. And um, I first of all went to the record company and they said they'd give us a high, per high percentage. And we pared it right down to the point where we could um, get 54.5p per single, which is extraordinary. Um, then I thought, well, if we can get that, why not ring up the record retailers? And I was told there were 7,000 of them. So I just thought, well, there must be something called the Record Retailers Organization. And I rang Chris Morrison, who's Ultravox's manager. And I said, is there anything called that? And he said, yeah, and it's called the Record Retailers Organization. I said, oh. So I rang them, 
And he, the guy gave me the names of the directors of, what is it, Smiths and Boots and Woolworths and Record Merchandisers and uh, HMV, Virgin and Air Price, who controlled 50% of record sales. And I told them what it was about, and they agreed to waive all their profits, which is extraordinary, I think. I don't think it has been done before, so that was good. That meant that we are now getting close to a pound a record. Basically, anybody who's buying this record can be assured that the pound they're giving for the record will literally go into somebody's mouth. There's a whole cross-section from black music and dance music and heavy metal and pop and rock, rock and roll. Everybody just coming down and I think that's, um, I, we only, I only thought about that when he said it yesterday. Right Bob, we spoke to you yesterday, it's all starting to happen now, what's it feeling like? Well there's only Midge and me here and about a hundred film crews, so <laughs> I wish somebody else would hurry up and get here. <laughs> Who's on their way? Um, well Duran, Duran and Spandau have just landed and um, Bono has just come in. He rang me last night and said that The Edge had um, got a kidney infection which, and so he's in hospital. So I um, send him my love and I hope uh, he gets better. So that's a bit of a drag because he was going to be the lead guitarist. But um, there's about a million guitar players coming down. Um, I don't know, it's early in the morning. Ask me at the same time tonight and I'll tell you how it's going to go. How long do you think it's going on for then today? Oh, Mitch and I will be here until tomorrow morning. I got a phone call from uh, Bob last night telling me to come and Phil Collins, is, Phil Collins is going to be here, which is wonderful. So uh, I put off loads of things, never mind, I came back from America early as well and George is coming back tonight. I think he's coming straight here from uh, the airport, so he should be here about 7.30. And what are you going to be doing today? Well, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know yet. Whatever it is, it's for a good cause. Anyway, I think it's a great idea this actually, it's wonderful. It's really good, lots of people always talk about doing these things, but very rarely get them together. So it's going to be a good all-star cast. Paul, can you just hold it there? Paul, and then we can just do shots before yeah. you go in. Sure. Okay, have your shoulder. Quick. Do it. 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 Do what brings you out this morning? What are you doing out this all, morning? All for the cause. Bob Geldof phoned me up and told me um, that he was doing this thing and would I like to be involved. And I said, yeah, because uh, no matter how much you send away to Ethiopia, you never enough. So the chance to do something else, something extra, was a welcome one. And uh, I hope we make a good record. And I hope we sell a lot of records. And I hope. The money gets through to Ethiopia, which is the whole idea. And what have you been doing on the single? Well, I, I sing a third harmony, which is my um, speciality on the on the melody, and uh, I smile a lot. And how's it felt, sort of getting together with all these different people? I think it's going to be very interesting, you know, all these egos together in one room. Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Not bad. Feeling subjected to this poor man too. Phil Collins is here. Oh, great. Great. Oh, God, I can't do that. Have you got the vocals there? And I can switch them in. Excuse me, just thank George. God, fuck, what a, what a test of bottles. Oh, yeah. Do you know George Bono. I've got to take my vocals there. Paul Young. Yeah. Okay. As an event in itself, I mean, besides the, the the cause that it's been done for, it's it's a bit of a, it's, a, it's a bit like musical history. It's like pop history. It's the first time that I can remember in in my sort of musical career that a, a bunch of musicians have actually got together from all different types of 
of the you know, musical areas. I've actually all got together and worked on something that hasn't been like a live performance or a, you know like a superstar session type thing. I mean, the fact that you can get Wham and Duran and Spandau and you know whoever else all in the one room, all singing on the same record, that's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a feat. That you know, I think, I think Bob's done a great job of actually getting all those people in there. And there won't be snow in Africa this Christmas time. The greatest gift they'll get this year. Stop, I know what to do. I found the plot, okay? What we do is you turn me up marginally louder and we do the first bit of that line and I'm going to drop myself in. You can do that, can't you? You're a genius. So I'll do, and there won't be snow in Africa. Bag, silence. Then I do that, so turn me up because I really can't hear it, right? You know, it's better because it helps me with the phrasing. Otherwise, I can't put my heart and soul into this, you know? <laughs> we said that girl's off. Give him a toadstool. <laughs> and there won't be snow in Africa. The greatest gift they'll get this year is life. Oh, when nothing ever grows, no rain or rivers flow. Do they know it's Christmas time at all? <laughs> I'm really sorry because there's nobody out there listening to the track, you know. Let's have the next line coming. And it's a world outside your window. And it's a world of dread and fear. Who where the only water flowing is the bitter sting of tears. Okay, the Christmas bell. Yep, it's getting better. Hello, hello, uh, oh hi, um, are you doing the single here, the Feed the Christmas single? No, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're Oh great, right, um, uh, I, my name's Neil, right, and I've come, what's this? It's a desk. Do you... There's a world outside your window, um, you know what, I need, uh, if you can take Midge out, just after like the first, la first line, um, the echo's a bit heavy and the vocal's a bit low. Somebody's making a Christmas single down at Stonehenge, if that's going to help. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah? What, an acoustic one? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be better than all this technology anyway. <laughs> Let them know it's Christmas time again. You come in on the again, come in earlier. We just go underneath it. Okay, so. Oh, so we don't sing the let me do We will, we can come back and do that again. Yeah, yeah but we're going to do it. We're going to do that bit first. The mass voices, then we'll do the, the let them know it's Christmas time. But yeah. Oh, so we just start off with all feed the world. Yeah, so we'll do all them first, and then we'll do all the other ones. So it's a ripping idea. We were thinking about every other chorus, weren't we? Never mind. Sing rewrite. Okay, again. So uh, like, chaps, George. Can, can you just play the track? Right, over the speaker. Over the speaker, please. Can you turn it up quite loud? <laughs> when nothing ever grows, no rain or rivers flow, do they know it?
it's Christmas town at all. But if it started off really well, quietly, yeah, right. and then suddenly so we could we could really go warm like that with it, you know what I mean? It would be great. I mean, I don't know if we can do it in the short yeah, time right. that we have. But like, if everyone started singing it quietly, yeah. and then just suddenly so well, it went like that, you know let's, what I mean? let's break it up into groups yeah. and let's get, you know. It's only really, it's three groups. parts, that's all it is. Yeah, it's yeah. the two feet the world. It's, it's the complicated, store, really. Bob. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, no, just let's do just for, so an for, for an intro, to an intro five. But I'm just saying, if we can start it, too loud. Once with, with just the one line, yeah. and then bring in the second yeah, line yeah. the second time, the third line the third time, and then on the fourth time, really it's start to sing it loud. Yeah, yeah. It might it might have yeah. some effect, you know. Just that actual uh, that actual line itself. The birds say a prayer. It's hard for me to sing powerfully. If we if we uh, if you wanted to kind of change the notation a little bit, so it started off a bit higher or something. But say a but say a prayer. I could do that if you want. And the Christmas bells that ring there Are the clanging chimes of doom Well, tonight, thank God, it's them Instead of you And now Is that the chimes of doom I pulled off? Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. It's it's a bit idealistic to try to try that. Let's start off with it and mix it up. Well, with the start off, start off not completely, but just singing yeah. it normally, yeah. right. not and, loud. Otherwise, it sounds wimpy. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, 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 we can fade it about a echo. You know. So, yeah. Are you going to get the final word on? Let them know it's Christmas time. No. What, what I do, I think we should just keep going around, and get really loud, and then we'll do the let them know it's Christmas time as a unit and things separately, yeah, and we'll just edit it on. Brilliant. Otherwise, so we all we all sing it in unison the first time, right? thing out of this is that everybody's going to be number one. If it goes to number one at Christmas, which it will do, with a bit of like public care willing, it's funny because everybody will be there together, you know what I mean? It's just going to be so, it just sort of, it's very good, you know what I mean? Because it sort of destroys all that rubbish that's been going on for the last sort of year, you know? Everybody competing with each other, now they've all got to be nice to each other. Today, everybody who's been rude about each other is in this room. I missed Wham, unfortunately, <laughs> but I bumped into Sam and Le Bon. We got on a hat like a house on fire, so it's quite amusing. <laughs> what about the cause? What for Ethiopia? Well, I mean, to be quite honest, I don't think you're going to change it overnight, you know, but I think that if somebody takes initiative, it's very healthy. I don't think that, you know, people have been trying for years, you know. And, you know, I don't think that we should take all the credit, all the people in bands and stuff, because there are other people who have been doing it for a long, long time. But I think that, you know, because people are like, Duran Duran, Koch Club, Wham, are so famous, I think it's very healthy, because you can use your influence to sort of make people go out and think about it more, you know. I think it's really good. It's been a really good atmosphere today. It's almost like Christmas. It's Christmas time. There's no need to be afraid. At Christmas time, we let in light and we banish it. Man. 
Basically, anybody who's buying this record can be assured that the pound they're giving for the record will literally go into somebody's mouth. <laughs>